friends. In my last video, Easy Stencil Techniques, I shared some fun backgrounds and cards that I made using Stampin' Up's Butterflies and Flowers Layering and Decorative Masks. I think by now, if you've seen that video and maybe some other videos that I've made using stencils, you've probably figured out that they're one of my favorite products to use when I'm creating at home. So in the last video, I used some background masks, but I didn't use the layering masks that featured the butterflies and the flowers. And that's what I'm going to do in this video for you today. So let's start stamping. Here are the decorative masks. So these, actually three, are the ones that I um, am going to be demonstrating with today. And um, I might pull this one into a card today too. I'm not sure because I am creating on the fly. I'm going to be designing the cards as I film. And these were the two that I used in my last video. I'll just show you um, a background. Here's one that I made. And here's another one that I made. But for today, we are using the layering decorative masks, which I'm really, really excited to play with. So I'm going to start with the flowers, uh, but I will show you first. Oops, I just put wood in my wood stove, so I've got charcoal on me. <laughs> but I'm going to show you a card that I've already made using this decorative mask. Now, for this card that I'm going to show you, I did not do the layering because this is kind of like a two-step, right? This is the detail that you put on top of this image. But what I did for the card I'm going to show you is I put this on my white card stock. I covered it with Versamark, uh, removed it. I embossed the images with white. And then I pulled in sort of that embossed resist technique where I stamped around it. And then this is what I ended up with. I used the very first size stamp set. So I stamped the script using uh, Night of Navy, Poppy Parade, a little bit of crumb cake. I stamped the leaves with Mossy Meadow. I did a little bit of sponging and added some um, elements and then just added my ribbon and the sentiment. So that was just a really fun, simple card to make. And again, I just used the mask exactly as it is. Okay, but I'm going to show you today how you can layer them, which is how they're meant to be used. But I mean, you know, you can use your, your stuff however you want, right? Uh, let me get some, I've got some post-it tape here that I found in my desk today that I didn't know I still had. And I'm going to put a little bit on here. I like to line my paper up with the grid marks on our grid paper. Just to make sure I'm stamping straight because if you know me, crooked is my middle name <laughs> in a good way, but I tend to do things crooked all the time. All right, I'm not going to go right up because I'm going to um, put some leaves on this. So I think I'm going to tilt this just a little bit too. So I'm going to do that. Let's just put that down there. a little bit here and I'm going to take some post-it notes that I also found on my desk it's amazing what you find in your desk that you forget that you had so I'm just going to put some post-it notes on top so I don't get uh, any ink where I don't want it and I think if I were smart I'm actually going to take some more of this post-it tape And put that here all right um, now I have not yet cleaned my blending brushes from my last video which I did a few days ago so I'm gonna stick with the same color scheme that I used which was uh, which was what did I use now I used gorgeous grape melon mambo and Bermuda Bay pumpkin pie and old olive okay so I'm gonna stick with the same colors and I'm gonna start by pulling in my melon mambo no 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 I'm gonna start with my pumpkin pie 
and that's going to be my first layer and then I'm going to use Melon Mambo for my second layer. So I, you know, you could use like complementary colors like a light pink and then a dark pink, but again because I haven't cleaned my brushes, I'm just going to use the colors that I used on the last video and hope for the best. So, lightly sponging on my pumpkin pie. And as I mentioned in my uh last video with easy stencil techniques always better to go with a light touch and add ink because um, of course you can't take ink away once you put it on right and I do definitely want to add some more depth to this so I want to add a bit more ink kind of in the center there I think the combination of this orange with this Mellow Mambo is actually going to be super pretty at least I hope it is all right I like to go off on my scrap paper a little bit to make sure I don't have um, this overloaded with ink and I'm just going oh oh wait wait okay so now I'm gonna take this off can I just say I think that is pretty as is attempt to line that up correctly I'm gonna line up this dot with that dot and the petals and oh yeah that's way easier for lining up and now I'm lining up these two okay so that's that's just made my life a whole lot easier all right let's give this a whirl a little bit of melon mambo and I'm gonna go right on top. I'm really excited to see how this is gonna look. I'm gonna go a bit darker. Okay, let's see guys, let's see. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. Now look, I didn't mask that little flower off, did I? So I've got a bit there. Sorry, I'm drinking coffee as I speak here, but that's fine. If you know me, I don't stress about things like that because we can always cover them up and, and do something else. So you know what? Why don't I put that flower there? Why don't I? So I'm just gonna take a baby wipe and wipe this off. In my last video, I mentioned you could just wipe off your stencils or you can use a little bit of soap. Um, and somebody asked, well, which is it? Because I kind of said both. <laughs> but personally, if you're using a regular dye ink like I just did, I just wipe it off um, with either a baby wipe or a rag. But if you're using Versamark, of course, it's a heavier ink. So I find soap or a baby wipe works best. So I'm going to move this little bit of tape and I'm gonna line this up like so this is why I say don't feel like you're making mistakes because sometimes what you think is a mistake turns out to be the best <laughs> um, the best end result for your your card okay this time I'm gonna remember to mask things off a little bit better so we're just gonna do that one flower um, uh, let's bring the orange in again okay take this off and I'm gonna position this on top I thought this flower laid in with this one maybe I'm wrong but it's what I'm doing so it's what I'm gonna do it may not be meant for that but I'm gonna do it and see how it turns out don't know till you try right Okay, 
Melon Mambo. Let's see what we get. <gasps> I want to save that. I think it looks pretty. It looks good. A little bit more pink there. You know what? I'm going to put a leaf on there. Not going to fret about that. I think those colors, by the way, are just beautiful. Okay, so speaking of leaves, look at this, guys. This works with the same, um, the same mask that I just used. See? You've got your two flowers here. Look at those line up there for your leaves. So let's figure that out where we want to put these. Okay, so I am lining this up and I find um, I had to play with it for a bit so I turned the video off. But here's what I have found. These two bottom leaves here, when you line them up with this tiny flower, which um, was this part right here of the mask, once you line those up, the other ones just kind of follow suit. So I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to put my tape back down. Now the one thing I just realized is this leaf is going to kind of go on top of this flower again. I don't worry about things like that, friends, because guess what? I can put a sentiment across there or put a little bow. No one's going to see it. So don't be quick to throw your projects away if you think you've made a mistake because, uh, like I said earlier, the end result is usually better than what you imagined when you have to improvise a bit, right? I always remember that because years ago I took a toll painting course with a wonderful lady and um, and she always said when I felt like I was making a mistake, that's okay, you can just turn that into a little bush or, you know, cover it with something. And I just thought that was a really great lesson. Uh, and the same applies with our paper crafts. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and add some old olive. And again, I'm using a light touch like I did on the flowers because I can go back in. You could also use a stamp dauber, a sponge dauber I should say. That's a little bit close to the edge, so let's just cover that. Now I'm going to go in a little bit darker. Which gives me some nice variation with the green, with the light and the dark. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we've got. Oh, you know, I just love, love, love this. Love this so much. A little bit of green here. Again, not going to worry about that. And let's see. Oh, I really love how that turned out. I think what I'm going to do, actually, is put this on the side. Tape that down. This is pretty much torn. There we go. just to make it look like the leaves are coming off the page. This is so much fun. This is really, really fun. I'm going to stick with the orange and the pink. Do that, take that off, bring this in, get my three petals lined up. I don't even think I need to tape that down. And then I'm going to do another one of those two. So let's do this first. I think we need to add a few of those actually. Um, let's do another big one here. Let's get the whole flower in. Okay. Bring this in. 
Line that up. Get my pink. Um, let's cover this a little bit. And cover this a little bit. So fast. Look at that. Oh my gosh. All right, let's do the small flower here. Um, let's see. Yep, I think we'll do that one. We'll do, where do we want this guy? Right here. Why not? Post-it note. Mm -hmm. Some orange. Do a softer color. Won't do as dark. And then line up this right on top. Pink. Wow. More greenery is what I think I need next. So let's bring this back in. And I'm going to add, um, we'll add, just, I'm just going to play with this and see what I can get that looks good. So I'm going to use these little guys here. I'm just going to take my green. green and um, we'll use this one here oh look there that lines up really good except it goes on to that flower which I don't want to so I'm going to flip this around so I'm lining these up with whatever I can here. So I'm going to put that there. And you'll see as you're playing with these how these line up. They just line up really, really well. A little bit more green. And I'm going to do I'm going to do that up here as well, I think, if I can. Um, we can definitely add this one. And we're going to stick this one with that little point right in between the petals. So pretty. If you recall, I had cut this down to measure three and three quarters by five because I wanted to put it on a layer on top of my card base. But I brought in a black, basic black card base, and I like that so much, I'm not going to do anything, any extra layering. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on my card. I'm going to use the double oval punch. So let me get a scrap piece of black cardstock. I've got this in my scrap basket, and we'll take that out. So let's cut this first. Oh, there's two pieces there. See? That's going to hide those smudges. And now I need to figure out my sentiment. Okay, I have chosen to use the best year stamp set because I want to turn this into a birthday card. So I'm going to stamp happy birthday to you. Which is where? Right here. And I'm just going to stamp that with, um, I'm going to stamp that with uh, Old Olive. And 
Then I'm going to pull in my Stampin' Dimensionals. And bring in my piece for the inside. Damp this with multiple colors. I'm going to pull in my Pumpkin Pie Marker. Go across the top. And maybe on the third line down. And then I'm going to bring in my Melon Mambo marker. Go in the middle. And it's okay that it's overlapping the two lines above it. Because that's going to bring in some color too. And then some old olive. Let's put a little bit on the top. Maybe a little bit in the middle. So I'm going to have multi colors on this. And that's going to tie in the colors that are on the front of the card. See? All the same colors that are on the front of the card are now on the inside of the card. And lastly, time to add some embellishments. I think I just want to stick with pearls for this card. And I've decided I wanted to add a ribbon bow. So this is our white crinkled seam binding. So there's the finished card and I am so happy with how that turned out. Those decorative masks are so much fun to use, I can't even tell you. They are definitely one of my very, very favorite Stampin' Up! products. But again, I'm pretty darn partial to stencils. But I I am thinking scrapbook pages, little home decor pieces. Like my brain is just spinning. I am loving these flowers so much. Definitely my favorite. Love, love, love. And I love those colors. They turned out so nice. Okay, butterflies. Now it's time to use the beautiful butterfly. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down, measure four by five and a quarter, so that it can go on my standard size card base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half when folded. And I'm gonna put my, uh, let's do landscape actually. Oh, oh, I'm gonna put my tape down. To hold this in place and put my butterfly right there okay I think we're good I'm gonna go in with my Bermuda Bay now and I'm gonna hold this down because this little bit with the antenna tends to want to lift up so I'm just gonna push that down and just go right over top now if you wanted to while this is on there you could take one of the other masks that comes in comes with this set and put that on top and then go um, go on with a different color and you'll have this design on the butterfly so there's there's so many things you can do guys so many things but we're gonna do the layering portion now I am lining up these two lines to the top of the wings. There we go. Okay, gorgeous grape. Okay, so that's just a light touch. But now I'm going to go darker up the, the center of the butterfly. And I'm pulling that ink into the wings, but not all the way because I want to have that gradual. Uh, look. Okay, I'm very excited to see how this butterfly turns out. Put those all aside. <gasps> I love that. I love that. And again, I got some ink on the side there. It is what it is, guys. It is what it is. So, how am I going to fix that, you might say? Well, we could bring this one in and add a few flowers. Why not? Why not? We 
could add this one and add some greenery, but no, I think, I think we're going to do this. I'm going to pull that in. I'm going to bring in my melon mambo and I'm not even going to take this down. I'm just going to hold it here and I'm just going to go in, not all the way. I'm going to start dark, dark at the tip and then go gradually towards the butterfly and then just kind of let it fade out. See? Mm, so nice. I'm going to do the same thing here. Just very, very lightly. A little bit darker in the corner. That's, that's looking pretty nice. Pretty nice. And I'm gonna do a little bit here. And a little bit here. Just get in those corners. So I just went dark on those two corners and really light on the other corners. I've decided I wanna add some texture to this layer. So I've brought in my textile textures embossing folder. So I'm gonna put this down and um, I'm gonna have the Stampin' Up logo on the top because I always like to say bumps are bo bumps on bottom. So where it feels more bumpy, more raised, that's what I want on the bottom. Close that up. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that here, put my gray plate on top and run that through. Yeah, see, I like that. Can you guys see that? Just adds fun texture. So I'm going to do a gorgeous grape um, card base. I'm going to take my Detail Trio Punch and punch this corner and this corner. See how that looks. Yep. Do the same thing on my card base. For the inside of my card, um, I've cut another piece of basic white card stock. And this measures four by five and a quarter. So I'm rounding the two opposite um, corners, just like I did on the front. And I'm going to pull this back in and add some more of that Melon Mambo, just like I did on the front. I don't even have to reload my brush because there's enough ink on there. For the sentiment, I am using the Many Messages stamp set, and this has a coordinating die. I just tend to keep it in the stamp set. And I also have a tub where I keep um, die cuts and uh, bits of ribbon and things that I didn't end up using on projects. And in here is a baggie with already stamped and cut uh, sentiments from the many messages. So that's a time saver having that fun little basket. So And now I'm going to bring in some rhinestones. And I'm going to position some, kind of making like a, a flight trail. To finish the card, um, sending happy thoughts on the front and pulling in our celebration special moments. For someone who is wonderful in each and every way, I think is perfect for inside the card. I am really happy with how these cards turned out. I had a blast making them. I cannot wait to make more cards and projects using these super beautiful layering decorative masks. And I hope I've given you some more ideas and inspiration on how to use your decorative masks, your stencils, and have fun crafting at home. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Take care and happy stamping.